So colleagues, while we wait, shall we just maybe do a quick round just to introduce ourselves, just our names and the institutions that we're from, um, just while, we, while we're waiting. So Alex, I'm just gonna go the way it is on my screen. So Alex is to my left and then Liesl follows Alex. So I'm Alex Holland. I'm uh, one of the NSCS postdocs. I am at the Albany Museum and uh, Helen James is my super awesome boss lady. <laughs> Alex, am I correct that you're a black belt karate person? Yes. Isn't that cool? <laughs> <laughs> it I comes find... with lots of responsibility and a lot of extra work. Brown belt was fantastic, <laughs> to be honest. Suddenly <laughs> you're a guru. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Alex. Liesl, and then Fulu, you follow on from Liesl. Okay, so I'm Liesl Hugo Kutsia. I'm from the National Museum in Bloemfontein. And I'm a scientist uh, working with soil mites. Mm. And Liesel has been an absolute stalwart in Bloemfontein. She has been the NSCF's champion, ambassador, leader under such difficult circumstances. We love Liesel so much. Fulu Thank and you. then Rendani, you come after Fulu. Hi everyone, I am Furupera Tambani. I am the science communication officer for the NSCF. So I do all the communication that you receive. <laughs> and Fulu had a little baby last year. So she's had lockdown with a little newborn in her <laughs> arms that have had her mother's presence unexpectedly. That was such a gift of lockdown. Yeah, yeah. it was a blessing. Yeah. Rendani yeah. and then Alison, you follow on from Rendani. Hi everyone, congratulations Puru. <laughs> I'm Brendan Mutadda Rasuisi from UKZN. I'm in Peter Marasberg campus. I am a principal technician. Uh, one of my job is uh, to manage the museum, specimens in the museum. So I also do the pricks and so on because it's a university. But I'm also in that part of collection where I manage all the museum specimens. Mm, thanks. Welcome, Rindani. Welcome. Thank you. Alison and then Linda, you follow on from Alison. I'm Alison. I'm the director at the Durban Natural Science Museum. I feel like I spoke my guts yesterday, so you don't need to say anything more. You me. did good, girlfriend. You did so good. You did so good. <laughs> you just got that hot chakra of the whole NECF forum to kind of split open. It was beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you. Linda, and then Nokwanda, you follow on from Linda, and then we'll hear from Tanya. Jenny from the Albany Museum. I'm from the marketing and communications uh, I'm an, yeah, officer. Uh, Alex and I are from the same institution and I had to learn via a virtual platform that she has a black belt, <laughs> which is good. If you want to go for a walk somewhere at night, you can just take Alex with you there in Makanda. You can just take her with you and you can feel very safe. <laughs> <laughs> Nokwanda and then Tanya. <laughs> Good morning, colleagues. Uh, my name is Nokwanda Trele. I'm an education officer at the Japan Natural Science Museum. I am not alone. I'm with a team of around about 10 people. We are at the hall. All COVID protocols observed, but I just want to share the forum with uh, the rest of the team. Lovely meeting you guys. Wonderful. That's wonderful. Thank you. And it's lovely seeing that beautiful roof, that beautiful building behind you. That's wonderful. Hello I'm to sorry, everyone. Those are, I'm sorry, those are my people. My those, are just, those are your peeps. Those are your peeps. So my heart just swells. <laughs> Tanya? So we're just introducing ourselves. We're just saying hi and where we're from. And you just take need to take your mute button off. Hi everyone. Hi 
I think. Okay. Okay. Hi everyone, my name is Tanya and I am from the Buis Herbarium in Marisburg. I'm a curation technician there. Welcome, welcome. There's a little bit of a delay on your on your connection, but you're very, very welcome. And if you um if you've got connectivity mm -hmm. issues, you you're welcome to put your to put your camera off as well because this is really an internal process. This is really a process for yourself. So this is not we don't need to to necessarily um connecting with each other on the screen. Hopefully um, we're going to spend some time right at the end of our hour together to share some of our reflections on this session. So welcome. So Fulu, do you mind starting to screen share for us, please, the PowerPoint? Thank you. Okay. So weaving, so our title is Weaving Healing Words. Okay, back to the first, back to the, there we go. So, okay, back to the beginning. There we go, weaving healing words. And uh, the subtitle is restoration through creative writing. And the word restoration, I chose very specifically, and I want to start there. I want to start with this idea of restoration. So if I can ask that everybody just puts their, um, just mutes themselves, just so that we don't have too much disturbance. But at the same time, we're a small group. So if you want to ask anything, just unmute yourself and interrupt. So we don't observe any formal protocols. We're a small group. You can just unmute and you can just interrupt. So moving to the next slide, why did I choose this term restoration? So moving to the next slide, just to give us a little overview of our process for you. So from rest and that feeling fatigued is something different and depleted. And if we connect, if we, oh, it says my internet connection is unstable, you guys must tell me if something weird is going on and then I'll just go on to my data. So just let me know if I lag or something like that and then I'll go on to my data. So um, to begin with, I want to just share this reading that, that we did with a hub team that was so powerful for us and it was a big aha moment for everybody that sometimes we fatigued and then we need rest. But sometimes everything that we've been going through, this, that video that depicted 2020, leaves us actually depleted. And for that, rest won't help. We need to restore ourselves. We need to fill our cups. And what I was hoping to do is that we'd be able to do three pieces of writing in this hour. They all have weird names. So don't worry about the weird names. The first one is called a chinquain. That's just a five line little poem, the easiest thing ever to do. I wanted to share with you the idea of free writing. Free writing is the foundation for any kind of creative writing. And it's a dead simple thing to do. Then we've got a little video clip, just three minutes that Fulu will play for us after that. And then I want to share with you this idea of a prompt poem. And I'm going to guide you through that poem. It's going to be dead easy to do. After that, we're going to practice some free writing. I'm hoping that we're going to do two rounds of five minute free writing. And then that beautiful poem that Alison shared with us yesterday is a poem called, a form of poetry called a pantoum. And we're going to have an opportunity to create one of those pantooms. It's a Malaysian word. It comes from the Malaysian tradition. And then I want to try and keep, so we're going to maybe spend about 20 minutes making our pantooms. And then I want to save 10 minutes at the end for us to share with each other just how we experience that, the session, how we experience the session. Is that all good? Can I just have some thumbs up from all of you? If that's all good, if there's any questions. So under the reactions, if I can just have some thumbs up. 
Thank you, Alison. Everybody, fantastic. Okay, so everybody, so you can just use the thumbs up for me so that I know that we're on track. So moving to the next slide, the next three slides have got lots of writing on them. And I just wanted to share with you because we didn't have an opportunity to do pre-readings. You know how I love a pre-reading. So I just want you to quickly read through these next three slides. Some people are suggesting that we're in the toughest phase of our pandemic because of this idea of fatigue and depletion. So if you just want to read that for yourself. Okay, so how do we know, how do we distinguish between this idea of fatigue and depletion? Let's move to the next slide. So I love this idea of an empty glass of water. You can rest that glass for as long as you want to, but rest won't replenish its contents. Isn't that cool? So similarly, our bodies and our minds are containers and our emotions and our intellect and our spirit, that's the content. So you can only give emotional, intellectual and spiritual output when your container is overflowing with content. And this means that we need to replenish, we need to replenish. So rest by itself does not necessarily replenish us. Let's move to the next slide. So the way to treat depletion is with restoration, not with relaxation. Isn't that an interesting kind of insight? And while relaxation is a passive state of not doing, resting, restoration is a deliberate active choice of activities which add to your inner resources instead of consuming your energy. And then there's some example of restorative activities. And for me, poetry, reading poetry, journaling, translating poetry, which is something that I'm doing a lot, which I'm loving, and regular journaling for me is a absolutely restorative activity. And uh, you can see there, this article is from a colleague of mine, Sonia Blichnot, um, and it's called On Depletion. And if you want to, you can just take a picture of that to go and read the whole article because it's actually very, very helpful. Good, can I have thumbs up? Everybody got that? Did everybody get that? Can I just get, get some reaction from, from, from you? Fantastic. So then moving on, moving on to the next slide. So to start us off then with our, so I hope everybody's got a pen and a piece of paper. If you're gonna work on your computer, that's also fine if you're gonna work on your computer. So we're gonna start with a creative ching quain. And a ching quain is literally a five line little poem. And this is how it goes. The first line is one word. It is a subject. It is one word that you choose. The second line is two words. It is a phrase related to your subject. Line three are three describing words. Three words that describe your subject, your, your first line. Line four, of four words. It's just a little phrase that links to your line one. And then comes the twist. Line five is a synonym for line one. It is one word again with a similar meaning, but with a different feeling, with a different quality. And so there are two examples on the right hand side of the slide. And can I ask somebody to read um, can I ask anybody to volunteer to read um, the first one and some, a second person to volunteer to read the second one? Watermelon. 
Yes. Can you read the, that, the, the, the little chin quain for us, all five lines? Watermelon, juicy, sweet, dripping, slurping, smack. So messy to eat. Yummy. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> was that Nokonda? Yes. <laughs> that was wonderful. I could just <laughs> taste that watermelon. <laughs> Thank you. And could somebody else read the next one for us? Okay, I can I can read it. Thank you, Liesl. Um, so, invisible force, questioning, searching, yearning. Waiting for a pur purpose. Life. Thank you, Liesl. Thank you. So you see how easy it is? So what I'd like you to do now is open your book, get your pen ready. And I want you to uh, take three conscious breaths. So sit, feel, feel your bum, feel where you're sitting, feel your bum on the chair, feel your feet on the ground. Become aware of your shoulders. They may be already a little bit tense after um, the after the the uh, beginning session. Today's check-in session, uh, and then just count your breath. Count five if you want to count five counts in and five counts out. So we take three of these conscious breaths. We count in one, two, three, four, five. And we exhale also on five counts. And in your own time, do that two more times. Okay, now I'd like you to choose your one word and we're going to write this very fast. The, the technique with creative writing is to do it very fast, not to worry about the quality, not to worry about how clever it is, how creative it is, to trust your subconscious mind. So I want you to choose one word that came up for you when you were maybe watching the video around 2020 or you can choose one of the four words that we've just spoken about you can choose fatigue you can choose depletion you can choose rest or you can choose restoration you can choose one of those four words but grab one word that comes to mind for you grab one word it can even be forum. It can even be NSCF, even though that is not technically a word. So grab one word. Can I just have a hands, a thumbs up? Has everybody got a word? Grab one word without overthinking it. Without overthinking it. And if you want to write it in Afrikaans or write it in Isikalsa, you're welcome. Grab one word. Good. Now move straight on to line two, line three, line four, and line five. And I'm going to give you a few minutes to do that. So just move straight through from one line to the next, following the instructions on the slide.
Can you give me a little thumbs up when you're done? Thanks, Alison. Thanks, Alex. Okay, Lisa. And now, just for practice, just for practice, just for fun. Thanks, Rindani. Choose a second word that feels like the opposite in a way of the first word that you chose. So the first word, your, your line one. Choose a word that feels, it doesn't have to be the direct office opposite, but feel, choose a word that is related to line one, but that has a different quality to, li to line one. And just do a quick second to quain. Just quick, just move your hand. Just those five lines. So don't agonize over any of your words, just what, grab them by the tail, whichever words come to mind, grab them by the tail and just put them on the page. So just maybe give me another thumbs up when you when you're done with your second one. Thanks, Nakwanda. So the joy of this writing process is to not get stuck on or get anxious about, about what you're writing, but to literally just grab whatever comes to mind and put that down on the page. It comes from your subconscious mind instead of your thinking mind. Are we done with our second one? Okay. Thank you, Liesl and Alison. I think Nokwanda was already done. Tanya's done. Then Dani and Linda. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. Thank you. So, Turn the page. So a creative chinquain is a fun thing to do because what happens is that somewhere you start with a word that's got energy for you and then somewhere at your subconscious gives you that line five. It gives you a, a kind of a reframing or a re-engaging with this topic that you have chosen. And you can do creative chinquains as easy as that Whenever you stuck with something, whenever you stuck, if you're having an argument, this is what's coming to mind for me now. If you're having an argument with your child, you can just start with argument and you can just write a little chinquain and you can see what might come up under line five is relationship. 
And you might realize, oh my goodness, yes, this is relation, I'm relationshiping here. Um, or you might start with anxiety and you might end up in line five with, um, with excitement uh, or with, so we use the creative Chung Quains, it's five lines, it cannot be easier. Use them to help you work with and process whatever might be coming up for you. Cool. Can we move on? That's our first poem done. Yay. Our first two poems done. Yay. Cool. Fulu, if we can move to the next slide. Okay. So free writing. So I want to introduce you the principles of free writing. And we're going to use this principle now, these principles when we do our prompt poem. And then we're also going to have an opportunity to practice the free writing. So all creative writing, all creative writing starts with this principle of free writing, writing freely. And what you need to write freely is you need three things. You need a pen, you need a prompt, something to start you off so that you don't get stuck on the white page. And you need what I call pace. You need a timing. You need something that contains the writing. So if you want a free write, you need your pen. You need to take a, get a prompt which you can get anywhere from anywhere. This morning I is a prompt. Um, and then you need to set your timer. You use your timer, you use your phone, you set it from, for anything from five minutes to 10 minutes to 15 minutes. Um, and you literally just keep your hand moving. You disregard grammar, punctuation, spelling. You just write whatever comes to mind. You trust whatever comes up. You're not writing something that you already know. This is the big difference between free writing and writing a report. When you write a report or, a, or an article or something academic or an email, you already know what you want to write. But with a free writing, you're writing to discover. So you don't know what you're going to write. And there's a beautiful quote that says, free writing is writing what spontaneously springs to mind and from your mind into your pen or onto your computer. And so it's catching that the tail. You're just going for it. That it becomes a technique. One becomes quite comfortable with it. In the beginning, you might sometimes have to write nonsense, which is a very good thing to do is to write nonsense. And so when you keep your hand moving, you can, you can sometimes you have to write, I don't know why I'm doing this. This feels so silly. Um, it's so crazy. I don't know why I'm thinking about a pink milkshake right now um, and why I already had breakfast and why am I so hungry all the time? And I wonder if there's something else going on and oh dear, I haven't called my mother this week. You can literally just write absolute nonsense and trust that somewhere amidst all of that, something interesting is going to emerge. So that is the technique of, th of, of free writing. You need a pen, you need a prompt, and you need to pace yourself. And then also what some of the, the gurus of free writing tell us is that if you want the ideal amount of writing, you write for three pages. So it's the three Ps, pen, prompt, pace, and it's also the three Ps for three pages. So Julia Cameron calls it your morning pages. That's what she calls it. And she believes that in, uh, alongside maybe with some meditation or maybe some stretching exercises, if every morning we write, free write for three short pages, all kinds of things become possible in our lives. So moving on to the next slide for you. We're going to go, <clears throat> um, oh yes, we're going to go straight into our free rights. I thought we were going to do our prompt poem, but we're going to go straight into our free rights. So if you can get ready, I'm busy putting my timer on. I in fact already pre-timed it for five minutes. So if you can take your pen, if you can take your journal, or if you're writing on the computer, that's fine. And starting now, keeping your hand moving, 
without stopping, even if you're writing nonsense. You start with a prompt, for me, this past year has been. If you get stuck, you move on to the second prompt, it felt like, it made me think of. So that's the first five minutes. And then I'll let you know when we've got to the first five minutes. And for the second five minutes, we're going to go to the second bullet. So we're only working with this top bullet. For me, this past year has been and start. Thirty more seconds. Okay, and finish your sentence. Just finish your sentence. Give your hand a little shake. 
If you're writing by freehand, give it a little shake. And then let's start straight away with your next prompt. And I'm going to give you four minutes this time. I know what always restores me. What gives me joy? What lifts me up? So your prompt is, I know what always restores me. So you start by writing your prompt. I know what always restores me. If you get stuck, you can go on to what gives me joy, dot, dot, what lifts me up and go for another four minutes. You've got a minute left. Okay, you can just finish your sentence. You can just finish your sentence and then you can put your, your pen down for a minute. Um, and you can just put your free write aside for a minute, just for a minute. We're going to come back to this free write and I'm looking at the time and I'm thinking that you are gonna maybe have to do your pantoons 
this afternoon and send them to me. I'm going to put my email in the chat because before we do the pantoons, we wanted to do a, 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 another poem form, what we call a prompt poem. So, Fulu, if we can move to the next slide, I think the next slide is our beautiful prompt poem. So we're going to do a prompt poem, which means we're going to listen to a poem. And the poem is in the form of a letter. It's called Dear Matafele Painam. And it's a mother's poem to her six-month-old six daughter. We're going to listen to it. And then I'm going to give you the prompts of the first words of the poem in a much reduced form. And as I give you the prompt, you are going to free write the, the, the you're going to free write to complete each of the little phrases that I prompt you, but we're going to do it in a rapid fashion. So you are literally just going to have um, a few a, a minute or seconds to kind of just write the words that come to mind. Um, so let's first listen to uh, Matafele Pynam's mother's poem. And while you listen to the poem, think about who you might want to address your poem to, who you might want to address your poem to. So Fulu, you can play, you can play that for us. Thanks. The sound for you, there's no sound. If you can just go back, there's no sound. Sorry about that. Dear Matafele Benu, you are a seven month old sunrise of gummy smiles. You are bald as an egg and bald as the Buddha. Your thighs that are thunder, shrieks that are lightning, so excited for bananas, hugs, and our morning walks along the lagoon. Dear Matafilipinum, I want to tell you about that lagoon, that lucid, sleepy lagoon lounging against the sunrise. Men say that one day, that lagoon will devour you. They say it will gnaw at the shoreline, chew at the roots of your breadfruit trees, gulp down rows of your sea walls, and crunch through your island's shattered bones. They say you, your daughter, and your granddaughter too, will wander rootless, with only a passport to call home. Dear Mata Filipina, don't cry. Mommy promises you, no one will come and devour you. No greedy whale of a company sharking through political seas. No backwater bullying of businesses with broken morals. No blindfolded bureaucracies gonna push this mother ocean over the edge. No one's drowning, baby. No one's moving. No one's losing their homeland. No one's gonna become a climate change refugee. Or should I say, no one else. To the Carteret Islanders of Papua New Guinea and to the Taro Islanders of Fiji, I take this moment to apologize to you. We are drawing the line here because baby, we are going to fight. Your mommy, daddy, boo boo, dima, your country and your president too, we will all fight. And even though there are those hidden behind platinum titles who like to pretend that we don't exist, that the Marshall Islands, Tuvalu, Kiribati, Maldives, and Typhoon Haiyan in the Philippines and floods of Pakistan, Algeria, and Colombia, and hurricanes, tidal waves, and earthquakes didn't exist, still, there are those who see us. Hands reaching out, fists raising up, banners unfurling, megaphones booming, and we are canoes blocking coal ships. We are the radiance of solar villages. We are the rich, clean soil of the farmer's past. We are petitions blooming from teenage fingertips. We are families, biking, recycling, reusing, engineers, dreaming, designing, building, artists, painting, dancing, writing. We are spreading the word. And there are thousands out on the street, marching with signs, hand in hand, chanting for change now. They're marching for you, baby. 
They're marching for us. Because we deserve to do more than just survive. We deserve to thrive. Dear Mata Filipino, you were eyes heavy with drowsy weight. So just close those eyes, baby, and sleep in peace. Because we won't let you down. You'll see. Hmm, thank you. Oh, I've seen it so many times and it's so powerful. Every time it is still so powerful. So I'm inviting each of you to take your pen and to take your journal. And I'm going to provide you with a prompts. I'm going to say them out loud. And if you will just follow my prompts and write. So this is a rapid journaling. We call it rapid because it goes so fast. So you just grab whatever words come to mind. So has everybody decided whom they addressing in their poem? Dear somebody. Can I just get a thumbs up? Has everybody decided who they're writing their poem to? Dear? Fantastic. All right, here we go. Dear. And write your, write your, the person you, you're speaking to. Dear. You are a... You are you are and we repeat dear dear and the name of the person you're writing to Okay, has everybody got the hang of it? I'm going to carry on with the rest of the poem. I'm going to give you the start line, the prompt, and you complete the prompt with a few words, with, with a sentence or a few words. I want to tell you. Some say that one day They say it will and they say And your dear, and you repeat the name of the person you're writing to. Don't no one. No, no, no one's, I take this moment to apologize to you because I take this moment to apologize to you 
because we will still still and we are We are and this is the second last line and they are so this is your your almost your last line and they are And we finish it off with these two lines. So we finish it off, you don't have to add. These are the two lines with which we finish the poem because we deserve to do more than just survive. We deserve to thrive. So those are the two closing lines of your poem because we deserve to do more than just survive, we deserve to thrive. Mm. Now you can shake out your hands again. You can shake out your bodies, shake out your necks and your hands. <laughs> oh, wonderful, everybody. Wonderful. So you can go back to that poem after our session and you can edit it you can give it a read you can change a few words here and there you can shape it into something and then it would be absolutely wonderful if you wanted to share it um on the on the email i would really really appreciate it it would be wonderful if you want to share it and uh, my my um uh i'm putting my my an address in the oh at gmail at gmail.com in the chat it's just ilza.olkers at gmail.com it would be wonderful if you want to share it so fulu if we can go on to back to our powerpoint and i'm gonna ask you just to oh who did i send this to did i send this to everybody or did i send this just to fulu um Okay, maybe I just sent that to Fulu. Fulu, maybe you can just post my, my address in the chat. If we can go to the next slide, and I want to just give you some instructions about how one crafts a pantoum, because we have now run out of time. But I would so want to encourage you to do this this afternoon. So the way you craft your pantoum is by harvesting from your free writing that you did are two sets of free writing. The, the um, for me, 2020 was, and the one about what restores me. So you read through your free rights, and then you identify eight short phrases that you like, that has energy for you. We will go for T at 11. Eight short phrases, that has energy for you and you underline them boldly with a bright pen. So when I say a phrase, it can be anything from a single word to three, four, five words, anything like that, a short phrase. So you want to have eight of those. And then when you've got eight of those, you mark them, you give them a number, one to eight. 
And you can do that in any order that it makes sense for you, in any order that you like. And you can also keep it completely random. Trust me, you can keep it completely random. But you want eight short phrases and you want them numbered from one to eight. And then using the template on the next slide, which I'm going to ask you to take a picture of with your phone, you order your eight lines in that order and then you will have your pantoon. So Fulu, if we can just go to the next slide. So if everybody would just take a picture, oh, there goes my pen. If everybody would just take a picture of that slide with your phone, if you can, give me a thumbs up if it's working, if you can take a picture of that slide with your phone. Thanks, Nokwande. Um, if not, thanks, Alex, Liesel, Alison, Tanya. Okay, fantastic. So, Linda, just let us know, Linda, if you need us to send it to you or, um, yeah, we, I would like very much for everybody to just have that technique. So, what you'll see is that the last sentence is the repeat of the first line. So the repeat, so the way it goes is you write, so you've ordered your lines one to eight and you follow this template. So you write your first line, your second line, your third line, your fourth line. Then you repeat, you repeat line two. Then you introduce your fifth line. Then you repeat line four. Then you introduce your sixth line then you repeat line five, you introduce your seventh line, you repeat line six, you introduce your eighth line. And then the last four lines are all repeat lines. You repeat line seven, you repeat line three, you repeat line eight, and then you repeat line one where you started. And that form is called a pantoum form, and you will be absolutely amazed at the poem that emerges from, from your pantoum and from your free writing. So, um, Fulu, would it be possible for you to email, maybe you can just email the whole presentation to Linda um, on her email address that she has there. Um, and then Fulu has posted my email and I would love to receive your pantoums. It would be such a joy for me. So if we could switch on our, if we could switch on our, our videos, those of us who can. And uh, maybe we can take, we can close the, the PowerPoint, thank you. Oh, now we have no time left to do our sharing. So I'm wondering if we could maybe just share one of our chinquains each. That will go very quick if you want to, if you're up for that. So we're not going to have time to go into our groups, but if you're up to it, up to it, we've got like three or four minutes. If we could maybe just share a chinquain, those who want to. Shall I just volunteer names according to my screen? Liesl, you sort of, Fulu, did you participate or were you just taking? Um, I participate. It's just when okay. we're doing the, I don't remember which part it, it was, but there's one activity where I was disturbed. Okay, did you I do it in Crane? Yes. Did you share it in Crane? And then Liesl and then Linda follows on from Liesl. Okay, um, chaos, emotional mess, trying, struggling, changing, forced for new perspective, trouble. And then the second one, the positive one was um, peace, still thoughts, writing, sharing, being, happy to be alive, stillness. Beautiful. 
Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Liesel and then Linda and then Nokwanda. Um, okay, mine, mine's quite sad, I think. So my word was tears, sad, emotion, wet, salty, raw. 2020, moaning in death, cry. Oh, sure. Oh, I am actually tearing up right now. I actually have, I am actually tearing up. Thank you, Liesl. Thank you. Linda, and then Nokwanda. Linda, you're on mute, my darling. Unmute, okay. okay. I chose, I chose restoration. And I said invisible force, fixing, mending, recondition. And a fourth line, so good to be. And then fifth line, return. Return. Oh, I love that. So restoration becomes return. I love that. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. Nokwanda, then we'll go to Alison. And then we'll come to Rendai. You're also on mute. There we go. Just unmute. There we go. Okay, I'll, so I'm going to share my one and one of the people that are participating because I'm trying to include them. Fantastic. Okay, my one goes like this. Love, sweet, kind, warm, accepting, courageous, knows no limits or bounds, grace. Ah, grace. <gasps> wow. <laughs> Wow. And then I'm sharing Zamo's one. She just uh, gave me a note because she's a bit better from me. Hers goes like this. Morning, fresh, wavy, starting new page, abundantly blessing on board, life. Oh, I love that. I love that whole starting a new page, which is so beautiful because of our free writing and a new page and a new morning is a new page in which we can write our lives. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Zama. Thank you. Um, did I, Alison, did I say be coming up to you and then down to Rendai? Yes. So I'm expected to say mine after that. I've got tears just listening. So, all yeah. well, right. So, mine was um, vulnerability, connecting people, soul, heart, mind, reaching deep within myself, courage. Ah, you see, that's what I love about this little Chinquain, because vulnerability goes to courage. And that is such a powerful transition that happens there. Thank you, Alison. Rendai. I chose for. Um... Meet, greet, learning, discussing, and meditating. So good to have this opportunity. Grateful. Oh, beautiful. A forum ching queen. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Thank you, Rindai. Thank you. Tanya and then Alex. Okay. I, I chose life. So life worth living, beautiful, adventurous, challenging, live to the fullest alive. Mm. Sure. Interesting. Because you go from life, which is something sort of out there, you know, life is kind of out there to alive. So it's kind of suddenly that realization, I am the one that is alive. That's beautiful, Tanya. Thank you. Alex. Okay, um, it's also a bit wet in my office somehow. I don't know where. <laughs> I can see you leaking. <laughs> I can see there's some leaking going on. Thanks. <laughs> okay, so my first one starts with home. Home, safe container, furry, open, wonderful. Always there for you, family. And my second one, hang on. <laughs> and my second one is... Wilderness, chaotic order, lush green, endless, a big scale exploration, freedom. Freedom. 
<gasps> freedom, wilderness and freedom, family and home. That's beautiful, Alex. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Those are such beautiful feelings that have been stirred up by our time together. I want you to take care of yourselves for the next 10, 15 minutes of tea time. We want to keep our hearts open and we want to stay courageous, but we also want to take care of ourselves. We want to take care of ourselves. So we're wrapping each of us in love. Thank you so much for joining our creative writing session. Please send me your poems, your pantoums. I hope you're going to work on them. And have a wonderful rest of the forum. Have a wonderful rest of the forum. And if anybody needs to reach out to anybody for support, please do so. If anybody needs to reach out to anybody else, please do so. Reach out to me, reach out to anybody within the hub team, to Fulu, or to reach out to any of your colleagues. We are here for each other. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful tea. And then you need to rejoin the main Zoom room at about quarter past 11. You need to rejoin with your forum link. Thank A you. group. Lovely. Thank, Thank you. you. This was nice. <laughs> Bye -bye. Thanks. Thank you. Fill Thank your cups. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.